In this video, we're going to take a look at the Dynam Meteor Sport Jet. Let's get started. Dynam Meteor Sport Jet has been around for a while. In fact, I got my first version 1 Meteor several years ago. That version had fixed gear and it was one of my first kit bashes where I cut out foam to mount third-party retractable landing gear. That Meteor flew great, but the gear were problematic, especially the nose gear. I had it installed as a pull-pull steering system that always seemed to get caught in the gear, resulting in numerous nose gear up landings. With the version 2 Meteor, with factory installed retractable landing gear, that issue goes away. In flight, my earlier Meteor was a snappy little jet that did all the basic jet aerobatics and landed slowly and softly. I'm planning to do several videos using this version of the Meteor. In this video, we'll go through the assembly process so you'll know what to expect when you get yours. Next, we'll take it out flying and demonstrate its handling characteristics. Then, we're going to do some comparisons with a brand new 12-blade EDF fan with a bigger motor that Dynam has provided. We'll draw some comparisons on amp draw, rough thrust measures, flying characteristics, and of course, the difference in the sound of the 12-blade fan unit. The Meteor has a 36-inch wingspan and a 41-inch length. It's powered in its stock version by a 2806 3000 kV motor controlled by a Skylord 60 amp ESC. Dynam recommends a 14.8 volt 2600 milliamp hour battery. Let's take a look at what you'll get. So here's a quick look at the retail packaging. The uh, key statistics are printed on the box along with a photo of the of the model which will give you an idea of how to put on the decals. So let's take a look at what's inside. Well, this is not too exciting of you, but you can see that all of the major parts come boxed and I've peeked into a couple of them. They're all wrapped in heavy plastic, so they ought to have come through the shipping process in a pretty, pretty good shape. So let's get it out of the box and on the table and see what kind of pieces and parts we're going to be dealing with. So moving from uh, left to right, we'll take a look at uh, what comes in the box. This looks like it's going to be one of those projects where Setting up the camera is going to take twice as long as putting together the model because there aren't very many parts that we'll be needing to deal with. So you can see that the uh, elevator and top of the rear part of the fuselage is there on the left next to the five-bladed ducted fan, a single sheet of instructions. There's a tail cone for the back, the rudder, canopy, a little pilot guy, some extra uh, wires and Y cords, the little red bottle with red top is uh, CA for some of the gluing we may have to do. Again, the rudder, the blade for the fan, um, just one control horn that we're going to need to mount on the rudder itself. The fuselage there on the stand and the wing over on the right side with the landing gear all mounted and the uh, servos and control horns for the ailerons all mounted. And then on the back I've taped up the decal so you can see them. So uh, at this point, I'm going to take a couple minutes, look through the instructions, make sure I understand the process of putting the model together, and uh, maybe get started on the decals first, as sometimes those are easier to do when the model's in pieces. So we'll take a look and be back in just a second. Okay, so we're back. I've had a chance to look at the instructions. They're pretty straightforward. I noticed there were a couple of things that weren't addressed. If you're used to foam models, you'll probably not even notice it, but if you're new to foam models, I'm going to talk about it when we get to those points. One of the first things that needs to be addressed is the whole idea of the decals. You know, Dynam decals are one of the really strong points of their kits. They're heavy vinyl, they're bright, colorful, they've got good adhesive. In fact, I've got some Dynam models that I've had here in the in the hangar for almost 10 years and the decals are still attached tight and look great. So the first thing that we're going to do is put the decals on the model and that's really not discussed in the instructions although there's a good diagram that shows you where the decals ought to go. 
Um, it kind of depends model to model uh, on when you want to do it and some of its personal preference. But I'm going to put the model decals on first uh, so that it'll be easier to work around some of the other parts as opposed to when the model is already assembled. So I'm going to step away, work on some of those decals, and I'm going to come back and show you my technique for putting the decals on. Okay, I've got most of the decals on the airplane and the fact is it took me almost an hour. I suspect that putting the decals on is going to be probably the longest step in the whole assembly, but I like to make sure that I've got them right. And the simple fact of the matter is that it's really easy to mess it up. It's really frustrating for me as an old Air Force guy to, to see roundels put on upside down, you know, the star pointing down or the star pointing backwards when it should be pointing forwards, and, and those are just real easy mistakes to make. And so I would caution you to uh, go slow uh, and uh, get the decals where you want them. Now, one of the ways that I like to do that to help me um, get them where I want them as opposed to uh, off by too much is a technique I'll describe to you right now. So first I start by cutting the decal pretty close to where the little die line is. You know, the, the decals, the vinyl is all cut and you can see those lines around the decals. And so I've cut that pretty close and then I'm just going to pick off the edge of that de the vinyl from the cut to where I've cut. So I end up with this decal sheet that's got the, the backer paper in sight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the decal pretty close to where I think I want it. I've got the other Dynam brand uh, decal on the other side, and I think that's good. A cross-check level against this line right here so it's not uh, on there crooked. And then what I do is I peel back the decal from the, the backer paper, oh, about half to three quarters of an inch. You see that? Uh, right there. And then I'm just going to give a quick tear of that paper. If I've got a scissors, I'm just going to cut it. And then I can hold it very gently by that adhesive, position the decal where I want it, put the decal down where the adhesive is exposed, and then here the backer paper is still there. So I'm just going to roll it up and then move my finger along that and put it down. What that allows me to do is to get it positioned, stuck down with the proper angle, and then I can just move my fingers along the decal, and I never have more than about a quarter of an inch of the, um, of the decal adhesive exposed at one time. And that'll prevent me from uh, having the decal fold back on itself. You certainly don't want the two sticky sides to get together because that'll ruin the decal uh, and you're likely not to get them apart. So that's the last decal that I needed to have on and so we're getting ready to move to the canopy which is the next thing the instructions call for. Okay so the next step in the instructions is for the um, uh, to put the pilot in the cockpit and then to put the canopy onto the well, essentially the hatch cover for the electronics. And uh, the pilot com that comes with the kit is this little guy here, and he just kind of fits right down in there. And so if you want uh, to glue him in there, just use some of this contact cement that comes with the kit. Now, there were a couple things I didn't like about this pilot. One is he sits so low, it looks like he's kind of sitting in the basement, and so he really needs to be up here. And so if you want to do that, you can just put a little you know, piece of scrap foam underneath him to raise him up. But he also looks like he you know, ought to be flying a biplane, not a jet. So I had another pilot figure that was more of a jet pilot that I'm planning to use in here. Like this other uh, kit provided pilot, he was too short, so I put some foam along the bottom. And now I'm just going to uh, glue him in using the kit glue. Now the kit glue is contact cement, so you got to use it like contact cement. And so I'm going to put some of the glue here on the bottom of the pilot. Then I'm going to put a little bit of the glue here on the cockpit floor. Then I'm going to push these together, get them in there. This guy's a bit of a tight fit. Wiggle him around. And because he's a tight fit, I'm going to leave him in there. Normally I would separate those two pieces of uh, where I've glued 
and uh, let it let it dry a little bit since it's contact cement. But he's not going anywhere, so I'm just going to leave him in there like that. So I think he looks a little bit better uh, for this for this jet than the one that that came with the kit. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to put on the canopy. But I'm going to let that contact cement dry a little bit. Uh, let the vapors get away from it uh, before I put the canopy on because I don't want any of the vapors to fog the canopy. So I'm just going to set that aside now that I've got the pilot in it and we'll come back for the, the glass top of the canopy in a few minutes. So the next step in the assembly process is to uh, attach the tail and the first part of that is going to be to slide these wires down uh, through a channel here in the top of the fuselage. I've labeled the wires before I put them in there um, using just a little paint pen like this one right here. And uh, so now I'll know what channel to plug them in when I get them in there. So uh, that's this next step. So we'll get these servo connectors plugged in there, push them through. They really aren't going to go very far at this point. just like that. Now we've got plenty of wire in there and so the next step calls for gluing on the the uh, elevator and the uh, servo assemblies here and we're going to be using the kit glue for that and so we've got plenty of wire hanging out underneath it so we can pull this back out a little bit to get good uh, access to where we're going to be putting the glue so that's the next step. Okay so um, we're going to just kind of fold up the elevator assembly here and we're going to be using this contact cement and we're just going to put it on the uh, various surfaces. We're going to put it on pretty generously uh, but smoothly so that there's a lot of coverage. I'll give you two tubes of this glue and this is about the only thing we're going to be gluing on so uh, it's not going to be a problem about having enough glue. You can use other kinds of glue here I've used uh, polyurethane glue like Gorilla Glue. I've used just regular CA works with EPO foam. Uh, but this Dynam contact cement works good as well, and so I'm going to use it. And the key here is to use it as you would with contact cement. And that is to have glue on both surfaces. And then with glue on both surfaces, put the pieces together. Hold them in place for just a second or two. And then pull it apart. Now if you can look in there, I'll try to get this so you can see in there as it comes off. There's a lot of little glue strings. I call them whiskers. And that is an indicator that the glue is starting to cure. So at this point, I'm just going to hold that top end and bottom end apart like this for about a minute, and, uh, and then I'll put them together permanently. You want to give the glue a chance to get a good even surface, and that's what we did when we mashed them together. And then we're going to let it start the curing process, as you do with other brands of contact cement. So about two minutes has expired now. So again, I'm just going to bring this piece back down. And this time I'm going to be quite careful about getting it in the right place and getting it down. Because when I touch those pieces together, now that the contact cement has started to cure, it's going to grab and it's going to be stuck. And so right now, you can see I'm giving it a tug on, this, on these um, two pieces and they are stuck together. And so they're going to be good. Again, I've got... Uh, Dynam models that I've used this glue on uh, that are years old and they are still stuck together just fine. So that's the tail end and so let's take a look at what the next step is going to be. Okay so our next step is also a gluing step and so I'm putting some glue on here using the contact cement. I'm being kind of generous with the glue because I'm not going to be able to put really put much glue on the on the uh, here we go inside of this little guy. So I've got enough there. So now when I put this together for this uh, trial fit and 
the, the smoothing part of the glue, um, it'll all fit together. And then I, when I take it apart, um, I'll be good to go. So I've got this, I think, set where I need it. There we go. We've got that on there. And so now again, I'm going to kind of slide it out <clears throat> and let that, that glue begin the curing process. Now, because I need it to slide in, you know, a half an inch here, a quarter of an inch, uh, I'm not going to let it sit quite as long because I don't want it to get stuck before I get it all the way pushed on. Okay, that's probably enough for now. So we'll get this on there. There we go. Got a nice tight fit. And now I'm just going to get a, a little cloth and pick up some of this glue that's uh, seeped out around the edge. And so now we've got that step done and we're ready to move into the next step. So the next step is to put the uh, control horn on the rudder. There's an indentation for the plate uh, here and it's just going to glue in. And then I validated that the rudder end is coming off this side so I don't put it on backwards. That's just one of those easy, simple mistakes to make that, uh, uh, believe me, I've made from experience here. And, and so I've got that dry fit. It looks good. So what I'm going to do now again is just put a couple of drops of the cement. I'm going to use the pegs on the control horn itself to push some of that glue down into the holes. And then I'm going to put a little glue on the uh, plate itself. And again, I'm going to use just that same tech technique of pushing it in there, getting it good and tight, and then pulling it apart. And then I'm going to wait for oh, a minute or so before I push it together for the final time. So at this point, we've gone about a minute and a half. Plenty of time for that to start to cure. We're just going to push it together. And at this point, we'll leave it alone. So getting the rudder onto the, uh, uh, this subassembly right here is really pretty easy. We're just going to slide this control arm through the hole on the side there. Try to get that in there without breaking anything. Yeah, it's been pretty easy so far. And then we're just going to slide the rudder up over the connection points and slide it down to the, uh, the various, um, to line up these holes. These things are going to screw on, so that's what we're uh, working to do is just to get that on so we can get the screws in. Okay, so we've got that pretty well lined up. We're going to take um, one of the little screws and the screwdriver from the kit. Put it in the little hole. A couple of turns is all it's really going to take because uh, you're screwing into plastic so you don't want to get them too tight. So uh, we've got one of the screws in. Let me get off camera here and put the other three in and we'll move into the next step. So the next thing we've got to do to finish up the rudder is just put the uh, control rod in. You, you can see that it comes, it has a, uh, a Z-band on this end and a little plastic uh, clevis on this end. And so we're just going to drop it into the big hole that's been uh, drilled out on this servo arm so it'll fit. Then there's a larger hole here, it's the outside hole. So we'll just uh, pull that apart, put the two together. Make sure they're lined up and a little pressure to snap them together. Now before I did this I used a servo tester to center this servo 
and then I can do some fine adjusting uh, after I get the radio connected and all of that programming done. So that pretty much completes the tail assembly. So let's take a look and see what's coming up next. Now you remember when we started off, I mentioned there were a couple of things that really weren't addressed in the, uh, in the instructions and we're at one of those points right now. We brought these wires in from the servos in the back of the airplane uh, and they go under here and right now that electronic speed control is in the way. So I'm going to use the little screwdriver that came with the kit and I'm going to carefully remove these screws that hold the ESCs in place. I don't want to strip out the plastic receivers there, but I do want these servos to go underneath the ESC because otherwise they're not going to reach. Move that out of the way and then just push the wires through so we can grab them on the other side. Okay, so with the uh, wires pushed through there, and uh, uh, it's kind of a tight squeeze. I had to work for a couple of minutes to get those in there, but uh, they fit without uh, too much trouble. Just one of those things where you have to uh, hold your tongue right to get them through there. Uh, but at this point, we're just gonna sh carefully screw this retaining strap back in place to hold our uh, ESC. We got the second screw in there. And just till it's snug. So now we've got it looking like it did before, but we've got those wires from the back all plugged in. So with the, um, the ESC back in place, let's take a look and see what we need to do next. So we're getting really close to the end of the assembly, and at this point we need to connect the two Y cords that came with the kit to the leads in the wings. And so the, um, the servos leads that are um, black, red, and white go to the landing gear. And so I've labeled one of my uh, uh, Y cords G for gear, so I know which ones they are when I get it shoved up through the, uh, the bottom of the fuselage. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure that I've got the, um, the wires mixed, so the dark brown on the Y cord versus the black on the landing gear is the right direction so I've got that one correct and the other part of the Y again the brown is the ground and the black is the ground so we'll get that one plugged in there as well and then the next one is for the aileron I've got the aileron right here and then these are easy because of the color schemes the same on the wires the brown the red and the orange and so we're just going to make sure that they're lined up properly because we're not going to want to mess with this after the wing is on so do it right the first time so that when you do your testing everything is going to work so there we are we've got all of that done now it's going to be time to drop these through the fuselage into the cockpit or the area under the cockpit and also get ready to mount the um, EDF so the first part of mounting the EDF in the uh, in the fuselage is going to be connecting the wires with these little uh, banana plugs on them uh, to the, um, the respective colors coming from the uh, ESC. And so I'm just going to turn this a little bit so you probably aren't going to be able to see it, but just know that I'm plugging the red into the red, blue into blue, and black into black. Okay, so at this point I'm just going to push these, these wires down into the molded out channel that is in the top of the fuselage so I can get them as tight a fit as possible because we're really not going to be screwing the EDF into the model it's just going to be wedged in there so this front beveled edge is going to go in a in a groove and that's going to push it down against the wires at the front of the uh, ESC and there's room for those wires to go down into the foam so it's not um, going to cut the wires or anything and then the other thing is where right down in here again it's kind of hard to see the wires come up from that channel to get to the motor and we want to make sure that those wires are stuck in there and so then you can see here we've got 
the EDF little tabs on the end in the space molded for it there. And so that fits pretty tight. And so that's really all we're going to do to mount the, uh, the EDF in there. Uh, you, may, you remember from the beginning of the video, I said I'm going to do some testing and swapping out uh, with a different um, ducted fan unit. So I don't want to glue this or uh, do anything permanent. And, and the instructions don't call for anything permanent, so it ought to fit in there when the wing goes on top of it without, uh, without any trouble. Now the next thing we're going to do is uh, pop the wing on the bottom and here's where um, we're going to put these um, Y cords through. I, I think I'm covering it up for you, but right here is a little hole and that's going to go into the cockpit area. So we're going to put the wire in there and then there's another one just like it on the side I'm standing and we're going to push that wire in there. And so as we do that, we're not going to have a bunch of wire uh, clogging up the area uh, where we want smooth airflow, uh, but at the same time we can get the, uh, the wires into the cockpit area where we, where we can connect them to the receiver. So at this point, it's just going to be a matter of sliding this back tab underneath. I'm going to stick my hand up underneath it to kind of guide the, the electric ducted fan unit into its grooves back there fits right in there and I'm going to be tugging on these wires to pull them through the hole and the wing just fits in there really nice just like that. Now I've got three, get them down in here in the view, three screws that are going to go into plastic receivers and so we'll mount those, get those in there. One up here. Nice little tight fixture so it's not going to be rattling around. That's a good thing. And then the last one is going to go in this one right up here. And we're just going to use the screwdriver that came with the kit and screw all of these down nice and snug. So at this point there are just a couple of things left to do and we're going to have this model together. So inside the cockpit now you can see what I've ended up with. Uh, when I got the model, and maybe if you looked closely earlier, you saw that the MSR66A receiver was placed right here, which makes it really handy to get to. But the result was that I ended up having to use a bunch of extensions, servo extensions, to reach from like the rudder, the elevator, and some of the other components. And so to make that all fit better, and to use the battery tray that's molded in the foam, I mounted the receiver back here. Now everything fits just using the wires that came with the kit and a 2700 milliamp hour four cell battery fits in here very nicely and, um, and it all balances pretty well with the center of gravity. So that's what I've got. I've got the straps here, space for the battery, the receiver with the uh, built-in gyro here and uh, and having the receiver here with that gyro is also a positive impact because the instructions for the gyro suggest that you have the gyro mounted on the center and near the center of gravity and so both of those requirements are met when the receiver is mounted toward the back of that compartment along with the benefit of all the wires reaching so that looks that's what the inside is going to look like really all I'm going to talk about right now since you may be using a different set of uh, radio equipment. I'm using the Detrum DT9 and uh, the MSR66A. Again, I've got that all programmed. Everything's working. If you're going to be using that combination, I've got a video on programming the MSR66A using the Detrum 9T radio on my channel, and so I won't double up on that. Let's finish up with just a couple of uh, loose ends to make sure we've got our model ready to fly. Um, I've gotten the radio programmed as I've mentioned. You can see the flight controls are level with the control surfaces around them. So I think I've got it pretty well trimmed up. 
uh, mechanically, so I don't have a lot of sub trim or any of that other stuff in. And it also gives me my full range of trim on the transmitter to make adjustments as needed. The other thing I did is I looked at the instructions and I used a control throw meter like this one, you know, and, and put it here on the uh, um, next to the control throw and then manipulated the controls to make sure the controls were within the range specified in the instructions. Now, the one the control throw that was out of range was the rudder and it had uh, quite a bit more throw than, than was mentioned in the instructions. However, since both the uh, nose wheel steering and the rudder with a six channel radio are on the same channel, I didn't want to uh, uh, make any changes there to dampen the rudder throw uh, because it would also dampen the steering. And with a jet, you're not using the rudder much anyway. And, uh, and it might come in handy to yaw the airplane if you were starting to drift in the wind. So that one I just left even though I realized that it was out of tolerance. The other thing that I did is I marked here with a little yellow marker at 105 and 110 millimeters from the leading edge. Uh, and that was the, um, the CG spots. And so with both the gear up and with the gear down, I inverted the model, put my fingers on that mark to make sure that the model was balanced with the battery that I had selected to use. So with that 2700 milliamp hour four cell battery I'm planning to use, uh, the, the model balanced nicely. Most of the time with these kind of models or any kind of model, slightly nose low is okay. You know, the old saying is that a nose heavy airplane doesn't fly well but a tail heavy airplane doesn't fly long. And so to be balanced or slightly nose heavy is just fine, especially to get started. You can make fine adjustments uh, as you get some flying time with the airplane under your belt. And so those were the, the two big things that I needed to uh, validate and cross check before declaring the assembly over. So let's wrap this up with a couple of closing comments. First, the airplane came through the shipping process without any damage. It was well wrapped and well packed, and so uh, you can expect to get a good model if you decide to order one. If you put together foam models before, the things that were omitted in the instructions are probably self-evident to you. Uh, since I would not recommend this as a beginner airplane, uh, the fact of the matter is that you're probably going to notice the things that were uh, omitted because they're relatively trivial. A couple of things that I did mention to you was the, uh, you know, the control horn and the rudder, that's going to be obvious to you. Uh, and then mounting the uh, EDF in the body of the airplane and, and, you know, removing the ESC so that you can get the wires in the channels so that you can keep them out of the way. Uh, the fit and finish of the airplane is good, as is the case with most Dynam models that I've uh, uh, been associated with. It looks good. The decals are great. Uh, it's a nice color scheme. And so at this point, it's just going to be a matter of taking it out to the field and seeing how it does. So a couple of numbers to check up on here. I put a watt meter on it to see what it was going to be pulling. And at full power, it was pulling about 44 amps with a battery that was at about 14.8 volts at the time that measurement was taken. Uh, with the watts coming in at about 635 watts. Now the airplane weighs 2.75 pounds with the battery that I'm using, so that rolls in uh, at about 235 watts per pound, which should mean that this is a pretty snappy airplane if the old rule of thumb in terms of weight per watts holds true. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. If so, please click the thumbs up button at the bottom of this video and consider subscribing to the RC Plain Views channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when I post new videos. So on our way out, let's take it outside and do a quick video walk around as we close out the video today. Thanks for watching.